as the world is preparing for a life post pandemic. For some, it can be pretty nerve wracking to think you can interact with so many people again. Today, we have Richmond therapist Nidhi Tarari to discuss anxiety and reemergence as larger capacity events start happening again. Nidhi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So this is a this is a topic we've discussed in the newsroom. You you like reach for a mask now, and it's really kind of weird when you start taking it off and and you know undo everything you've done for the past year and a half. Uh, this is this is something that a lot of folks are feeling. That's absolutely correct. I think that many of us have been so used to being indoors and being masked and having all of these precautions that were absolutely necessary through the pandemic. And now that some of these guidelines have been lifted, it can feel a bit disorienting and create a bit of anxiety for people. Yeah, so how do we connect with our inner experience? So I think that often we miss all of these internal cues that indicate to us that we're anxious. And with anxiety, some of those cues may be your heart rate quickening. Your breathing shifting so that it feels a little bit uh, quicker as well. You may notice that you have more energy. So that fidgeting feeling or when you bop the leg, right? <laughs> uh, we've all been there. Those are all those signs that you're starting to feel anxious. And so those signs present themselves long before anxiety reaches its peak. And if we're able to recognize those cues, that can make all the difference. So are those the triggers? Is, is that how we, you know, how do we identify triggers? Is that what you're talking about? So those are more of the physical shifts that are going to happen. Thoughts are going to start racing. But the trigger itself is going to be a situation, a thought, feeling, or event that evokes that feeling of anxiety. So often when we think about the triggers relating to the pandemic, we may just think generally that, oh, I'm scared to not wear my mask, or I don't know what it's going to be like when I re-enter society and go back to in-person. But there's more specific triggers that if we really lean in and listen to what our internal dialogue is telling us, for example, we may be actually worried that people may cross our boundaries. So if we want to yeah. wear a mask, but they don't, perhaps that feels uncomfortable. Or that maybe we'd be in a crowd at a concert and not everyone is there vaccinated. And so these are the types of specific triggers that we want to be identifying. Yeah. And so, you know, do you have any suggestions for practicing like healthy coping? For sure, there are so many different options out there. I think it's important to recognize that when anxiety hits, it's actually about the past or the future. It's a lot of should have, could have, would have, mm -hmm. or a lot of what ifs. And so what we want to do in those moments is ground ourselves in the present. The first tip I can offer is monitoring your breathing. You wanna breathe in through your nose for four seconds, hold in the breath for four seconds, and do a long exhale through your mouth for six seconds. And what you'll notice is your heart rate slows down. You feel as though you got more oxygen into your lungs and your, your thoughts actually slow down a bit as well. The second tip that I can offer you is being able to orient ourselves using our five senses. So there's a technique called the four elements uh, that goes through earth, air, fire, and water. Earth being that we notice our feet planted firmly on the ground, all the points of contact that our body is making with the chair we're sitting on if we're sitting. Air is using that four, four, six breathing technique that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Water is taking a swish of water, moving it around your mouth and following it down your esophagus and into your stomach. And the reason we do this is that when we're in the midst of anxiety, our digestion actually shuts down. Wow. So we're reactivating our di digestive system by swishing that water. And then fire is remembering a positive experience, immersing and embodying that experience and noticing the relaxation that happens from head to toe. Wow, that's incredible. Nitty, thank you so much for all of these tips. And to learn more about these practices, you can head over to nittytawarilcsw.com.